All right, all right. Welcome to the Real Estate Block Podcast. Uh, today, I have my good buddy, Jesse, with me. What's up, my man? Hey, what's up, Barry? No, I'm glad to be here, man. I, I've been in Southern California for like the last two and a half weeks, and I would say this is one of my highlights. <laughs> I appreciate that. So when you say highlights, are you talking about um, in, in this office, our, our little office here? Yes, sir. I love visiting <laughs> your guys's. Uh, operation. I love visiting my family. I love eating the good food, enjoying the good weather. But one of the big things that I really miss uh, when being here is the community mm -hmm. and getting together with good people. And not saying that there's not good people. I just haven't. I just haven't found my people. For here. sure. So, um, so Jesse, I, so I met Jesse in a mastermind that we're in. Uh, CG. It's uh, called Collect. You know, short for Collective Genius. Um, an amazing, amazing uh, mastermind. I'm no longer in it at this moment. I'll probably be joining uh, later this year again. But when you say you're from Southern California, um, so where were you in Southern California? What were you doing in Southern California? And have we done a Because we haven't done a podcast together yet, have we? No, we've never done a podcast together. And I'm not from Southern California. Okay. Uh, I married a girl who is from mm. Southern California. Oh, the best, the best ladies. <laughs> I know, right? I dreamt of this place. When I was growing up, I was like, Nickelodeon, that sounds like such a wonderland. And then I was watching <laughs> some of these like Asian American YouTubers that produce some out of this world content because it's so innovative out here in California. Right. And I love, you know, just the way that people think. And I eventually got the opportunity to go to that place where all of those YouTube creators were. And I was like, yep. dude, they're just normal people. <laughs> <laughs> no, hundred percent. So, okay. So you met her, you married a, a beautiful lady here from Southern California. So did I. Um, and I'm glad you're able to come out here to, to visit us here at this, in this office. Now, obviously we've come, our, our, there's two things why, obviously I, you know, I like you as a person. And I think why we connect is one, obviously real estate. And then two is the faith, right? Mm -hmm. Um, our Lord Jesus Christ and our savior. So Again, I love that. I love that about you. I love that you're a Christian. I love that you're an entrepreneur because, um, you know, a lot of times I feel like, um, you know, and we see this on our in our mastermind CG is that there is a lot of Christians on there. And a lot of people think that, like, just because you want to make a lot, you know, good money, a lot of money um, that, you know, it's a bad thing. Right. Yeah. And obviously it just comes down to being a good steward of, of, of that money. Right. Um, so anyways, I want to talk about, you know, last year. Right, 2023. You know, you're in the office. Um, you know, we got a lot to catch up on in 2023. You were just telling me that you had you got you just bought a commercial building. Um, your team is now in it. You're able to still have because you do a bunch of cool things in your community. You want to be the kind of authority. You are the authority figure in your community. Tell us what's going on in your community. Right? What are you doing? Where is your what is your market? And then tell tell us a little bit about 2023 and how that market uh, tre you know, treated you last year. Yeah, for sure, Aaron. So, for those that don't know, I'm from Delaware, primarily Wilmington, Delaware, which is um, the upper third county that you could say of Delaware because there's only three counties in this million person state. If anything, there's actually <laughs> three million chickens, so there's a three to one ratio when it okay. comes to chicken to people. So. <laughs> So that's the fun fact when it comes to Delaware. Uh, it do, is, that, is that where a lot of us uh, get our chickens from? Because I know California is yeah. full of chickens and cows. Yeah. I think there's a Tyson's down there. A Tyson's, okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's some crazy chicken plants in the middle of the state and then lower. They call it lower, slower Delaware. Okay. And that's kind of where all the beaches are. That's where people from D.C. like to go vacation, people from New York and, yeah. and people from Pennsylvania. All of those places that I just named have so much more uh, value per capita than mm. we do. So when they bring their money over, it's like California is bringing their money to like right. Boise or Utah or any of these other places right mm -hmm. around the corner from Southern California. So that's kind of the equivalent of what we experienced because Delaware is just – it's a weird place where they haven't reassessed their property tax values in like 40, 50 years. So they're a little behind the curve. I pay – 25 to 40 dollars on one of my uh it's called a twin unit okay. not so it's like a duplex but they're separate parcels so i have a twin unit that i get about 1300 dollars in rent and i pay 40 dollars in property taxes for not bad you're, you're making you're making us californians uh, feel terrible it's crazy and <laughs> i bought a quadplex for 360 
Really? Uh, three years ago. So actually, it has been almost exactly three years since I bought that. Okay. And my property taxes for that is only 1% of my purchase price. And it, they don't reassess every single owner. They don't reassess when you sell the property. It's definitely a strange place, but Delaware makes most of its money from corporate uh, LLC taxes because they charge $300 if you're on time. If you're not on time, it bumps up to $500. Mm-hmm. And then it's about 5% increase every single month. And there's about two to three million dollars or two to three million LLCs in which they collect revenue from. Oh, so nice. that's a that's a pretty penny for little old Delaware. No sales tax. Yeah. Income tax is relatively low on the high end, six percent. You know, so so. Okay. But for twenty twenty three, you know, we did roughly four hundred thousand dollars in revenue, gross revenue. Well, what do you do? Because you're telling us that you own yeah. a duplex, a quadplex, you bought a commercial building. I mean, you're doing it fantastic as an investor. What do you do primarily? And like, what's your what's your main focus? Yeah. Uh, let me take a step back before I had started this wholesaling operation with my partner, Kenny. Um, I actually was just a driving for dollars type of investor. Of course. And I had made $100,000 gross profit with my partner, Johnny, at the time, okay. back in, we acquired the property December 2019, sold it May of 2020, mm. like right after pandemic started. And we made like a $115,000 profit. We split it in nice. half. And this was when I was a sophomore, you know, finishing up my sophomore year of college at mm. the University of Delaware. So I had about fifty to $55,000 in my pocket in which, you know, I don't know how to pay taxes. I was just like, I'm just going <laughs> to reinvest everything and yep. write off everything. That was kind of my game plan. There you go. And I reinvested into some cold calling and some data and got some of these sellers on the line in which negotiated some seller finance notes. Also find my, found my quadplex through that campaign. Really? Which, yeah. The driving, do- driving for dollars? Uh, that was cold calling. I advanced from driving for dollars okay. to uh, unorganized marketing campaign. It was... How long, how long were you driving for dollars before you kind of like step forward into like maybe a, you, as you call it an advance? Yeah. Uh, that was <clears throat> that was about three to four months of driving for dollars, and okay. we were getting results really fast. Now oh, that yeah. I look back at it, it was ridiculous. You're like, why not? Why not keep doing it? Right? We didn't think about it like that, <laughs> and I didn't track any KPIs. I didn't have any real procedures except here's the data. Make the calls. If you get anybody on the line, send them to me, yep. and I may call them from. My personal self, which is terrible. So I didn't really have a business back then. I was just hustling. Yeah. And I think I got up to like 10 units by the time I had finished oh, college. Wow. I was, quote unquote, financially free by the time I was yeah. 21 years old. And wow. I was doing pretty well. I think, you know, my uh, total real estate value in the portfolio was in the seven figures. Wow. And I had seller finance notes. I turned the $50,000 into 10 properties and multiple six figures of equity. And a lot of great relationships came out of that, but also a lot of bad habits came Mm. out of it as well. And I thought I was a genius. And I even got into flipping property. I thought it's so easy to make money. Yeah. But everything kept on going good for me up until 2022, in which it required me to be a little bit more conservative, which I was not. I got six or seven properties with hard money loans. And oh, I think wow. across all six, seven properties, we netted $10,000. Oh, wow. Was that was that when the interest rates went up? That was probably around the time the interest rates went up. And it was also a combination of poor leadership, poor execution, hmm. poor preparation, in which you know we didn't actually know how to organize scopes of work, organized right. timelines, manage our cash flows. We just thought we had unlimited money. And I was just really capable of raising capital yeah. and selling investors on my vision, in which we never lost any investor capital. We actually repaid all of our loans, paid everything, principal and interest. And we learned a whole lot of lessons, and we were fully transparent about the process with everybody who believed in us. And it only made us better business owners and better investors through that experience yeah. but every single construction project basically ran over timeline ran over budget hard money loan interest was just eating up all the profits that were available every single day we left the property 
empty or unworked on was like a fifty dollar a day tax in a sense. You yeah, know? yeah. So we were just getting eaten alive and killed. One of my projects took like twelve, thirteen months, another project took like thirteen months. Some things you run into permitting issues and Yeah. You just get so discouraged because it's like, why do they do everything so different compared to the next county, which is so easy? Yep, yep. Well, you because so you kind of mentioned here that you you did drive for dollars. You bought you bought some properties. I mean, what was your number one exit strategy? Because obviously now we're talking about flipping, and obviously this is us just getting to know each other. So you're talking about flipping. I mean, were you, did you do wholesale right away? Did you go right into flipping? Did you go right and buy and hold? I mean, what got you into doing flipping and, and touching the materials? I got into buy and hold for financial freedom and I got into flipping houses to make active income. For sure. And in 2021, making active income through flipping was not very hard at all. Okay. Once okay. you get the deal, you had the money. For sure, for sure. But what I didn't realize was there was such thing as moving too fast. Hmm. I moved too fast and then I basically tripped over myself and kept on spiraling out of control. Oh no. Yeah. So what, why, why did you spiral out of control? mismanagement of cash flows and right, expenses, right. not knowing your accounting, not knowing the principles of finance very well, right. really, really hurt us in the long run, which caused us to go back to our basis in which we looked at, hey, what are our roots in mm -hmm. that acquisition? And what's the quickest cash conversion cycle? It was wholesaling. Okay. Yeah. So these flips, the cash conversion cycles were just over six months plus if we had too many projects at once. So yeah. if I were to go back to flipping, which we're definitely looking more into in 2024, okay. we, we set criteria standards of how much profit do how much profit do we make when we have to do this much work? You know, say we do a full gut job. Well, in Delaware, the standard for that is at least fifty thousand dollars, you know, because mm -hmm. of how much time it takes. And then, what what other projects do we have that we need to take into consideration that need these same resources? Mm -hmm. So nowadays we're finishing our projects in under forty five days, wow. and then putting them in service or listing them. I just got a triplex at the beginning of November, so that was like the only property I personally acquired this past year. I mean, in our wholesale company did like. 20 to 25 deals, uh, okay. completed contracts Nice. Um, in the past year. But that was the only property that I bought for myself, uh, and we completed the project by the end of December. Nice. So three units all ready to be leased out, all have really high quality standards. I used to also not take my rentals super seriously in terms of, hey, making sure that the standard of construction is very high so that you get high quality tenants. Mm. and. I had also um, got caught in an Airbnb scandal with a guy who scammed me for, let's say, $7,000 because it was first month security deposit plus $3,500 for a midterm rental. And I had went wrong with not doing a background check because the, the guy came from Airbnb and I had the generalization in my head that all people who come off Airbnb are good. <laughs> you know. And this guy, he stated that he was a government contractor for the Air Force Base. Okay. So my partner, Kenny, he, um, he's really good with, you know, getting a feel of people's character. And he was the one that showed the property. And he was like, Jesse, yeah, I think we can give him the go-ahead. Let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's uh, take I'm going a step. too deep down the rabbit hole. Yeah, Sorry. well, yeah, let's, let's take a step back. Because yeah. Air, the Airbnb scandal, I mean, that's that's pretty wild. I mean, obviously, you were doing a bunch of things. You went, you were doing flipping. You're You're obviously taking on some some properties and taking them down yourselves. Um, you were kind of doing some repairs to them, maybe doing the the rental paint, what do they call the landlord paint job. Yeah. Um, and now obviously you started taking it seriously. Then you said you were the the Airbnb scandal. How did you get caught up in Airbnb? So I'm guessing you bought a property, you list on Airbnb. How, how was that a scandal? Like what happened? So, somebody on the Airbnb platform was going to partner with you? Like what did that look like? No, so it was um... – I've been using Airbnb for the last two years, and it was making okay. good money between 2021, 2022, 2023 was a little bit shaky. Mm -hmm. We were looking to possibly transition into midterm rental. This person wanted a midterm rental, and we took it off the platform. And that's, oh, where, gotcha. that's where I went wrong, and I should have used my long-term rental uh, strategy in terms of evaluating tenants before just giving them the keys or the full reins to the property. And 
there was a lot of red flags. He promised to give me a cashier's check, was late on that. Oh, and so then, you met him in person, actually. Yeah, he drove oh, an hour man. up in order to meet me and give me a check. He gave me a handwritten check. It cleared. He gave it to me on Friday, deposit it, cleared on Monday. He requested a return. And oh, yeah, they, the, it, the scammers always get the return, yeah. And then it bounced <laughs> on Wednesday, and I just didn't have the energy to really go about filing the police report or chasing this guy down because it's just not worth my time. Yeah. So I'm out. The worst that happened was I was just out a month of rent. And uh, yeah. The opportunity cost sucked, but the lesson was invaluable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I mean, that's <laughs> that's the long and the short that happened with the Airbnb scandal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame my partner Kenny at all. Like he tried his best and honestly the guy had me fooled for sure. as well because I met him in person. Yeah, we both learned something. Okay, so so you go into 2023. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, things are slowing down with the flips and everything. Uh, end of 2022, you go into 2023. Where was your headspace at in 2023, the beginning of it? We had to get really sharp when it came to our finances, financial controlling, bookkeeping, because mm-hmm. we were really lost. And for like the last two to three years, I filed extensions for all my tax returns, and I didn't mm-hmm. make my payment. You need to make your payments on March 15th and April 15th. Hmm. You need to make your payments. Or no, you have to make your payments on April 15th after you file your business tax returns on March 15th. And even if you don't know how much you owe, you make a payment anyways. Right, and right. And then you, fi- I mean, you make your extension and then you do your filings, you make your amendments, you can get your refunds later. Never did any of that. Yeah. You know, I, was lear- <laughs> I was learning how to be a business owner. Did you, did you have a CPA at the time? Yeah, but I did not meet with my CPA enough. I didn't know what questions to ask. Yeah, it was just a whole process of learning how do we be real business owners. <laughs> so we had it to, is a learning curve, yeah. We thought that the whole business revolved around acquisition, which it does at a high level, but you have to have very good foundational pieces in order for your acquisitions to shine. 100%. And it's, it's the whole point of um, they call us operators, right? Are you a good operator or are you a bad operator? Because um, that's something when I, we first came in. And something I always want to tell people is, like, don't beat yourself up if you don't make a million dollars your first, second, third year. Because cause you're starting to learn the the basics of business, right? I was in the military, and then I was in the fire department. I had no idea about business. I didn't know anything about spreadsheets. Like, I was just – all I knew about is put on my SCBA mask, put on some gear, pulling the hose off the engine and going and, you know, putting the water on fire. Right. That was, that was, that was my training for the past, you know, eight, 10 years. Well, anyways, um, so then obviously then I, you know, we were hustling, driving for dollars, right. Just like yourself. And, and then it's like all these things that you got to start collectively learning. And like, and like I said, we'll get to me later, but like I said, the two things I really wanted to focus on this year, 2023, sorry, yes, last year, which was two days ago, was leadership and culture, mm. and we'll talk about that here in a second. But anyway, so you, so obviously, so you, you, you didn't, you didn't uh, pay the, pay the little bit. You didn't have the CPA. You started learning a lot in 2023. I mean, what was like? So obviously, that was probably the the wake up call. I mean, wh- how did the 2023 progress go, and where are you at now? We had to rebuild our organization from the ground up and evaluate right people, right seat who's sitting in what seats, Hmm. do they have the capacity to do that? And we're still working on that going into 2024 to become more sharp. But one of our biggest weaknesses in 2023 now became one of our strengths. So Hmm. we became a lot better when it came to finance. We became a lot better when it came to HR because it just was, I would pick somebody off the street who I thought was a really great culture fit. And we didn't really define (laughs) what does that mean, like hire, fire, (laughs) and train off of core values. We did yep. have those things. Yep, yep. Like our mission is to serve God and serve others using our gifts and talents to hmm. real estate investments based off of first Peter four ten. you know, using our gifts and talents yeah, I love it. in order to advance the kingdom of God. And then we have five core values. I'm gonna look like a fool if I don't remember them right now, <laughs> but it's fun, passionate, growth oriented. See, this is what we use the AI in order to bridge all the gaps. There we go. Um, it's growth oriented, and then yeah, you started using like an acronym. <laughs> yeah, no, we did. We did have an acronym, but it's not that good of an acronym. So we might need to. We, and there's a lot of pressure right now being on the mic, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, so the yeah. funny thing is, um, you know, so Jesse actually has, has his own podcast. And what, what's your podcast called again? It's called the Not a Genius Podcast. Not not a Genius Podcast. And again, if also if you want the recording of all this, you know, obviously go ahead. Um, <clears throat> so I'm glad, obviously, and I get it. It can it can be um, pressuring, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, mission statement, core values, vision statement, right? Those are. Mm-hmm three things that we really, really lived, lived by this, uh, this year as well. So this, um, this past year, I read a great book, um, by Natalie Dawson called teamwork. Fantastic mm-hmm. book. If you, if you haven't read it, uh, pick up the book. It's a little short book, but it takes, it always takes me a little while. If, if I, if there's so much meat in a book, it'll take me a little while to get through because I'm like highlighting, I stop and then I implement. Yeah. Right. And so one thing it talks about is in those three things, a mission statement, core values and a uh, vision statement is keep everything short. So, for example, our mission statement. Um, I, I think this is going to be my the best example I could. I could. But our mission statement is short, right? You ever go to an office and the mission statement is like the entire wall? If they have it on their wall, right? And you're like, who's going to remember that? No. Yeah. So one thing we do, do <clears throat> we do with our new guys is I always make sure they memorize our mission statement, and it's basically it's uh, impact real estate journeys with eth- ethics, excellence, and lasting relationships. You see how short that was? So. <clears throat> But it has the embodied of what our mission is. We impact sellers, buyers, any type of um, situation in their journey with, with regarding real estate, with ethics, right? So we want to make sure our team is always ethical, with excellent, right? We don't like mediocrity and lasting relationships. Treat them like you're going to know them for the rest of your life, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, and then obviously we have our core values just like yourself. And one thing I wanted to point out too, because you said hire fire off your core values, Uh, One thing we have now is obviously traction in our, in the book traction that I read is the people analyzer. Mm -hmm. So I literally built a spreadsheet and it has each core value and I have eight core values. I think I have like eight Eight core core values. Yeah. I have eight core values. And, um, but each one is, you know, I'll put in there and then I put a month, right? Each month and I'll have, is this person embody this core value? So you put the green or you put the yellow where it's like yes and no. And then you put, or it's a red, like, so one of our core values is resourcefulness, right? <clears throat> so are you, have you been resourceful this past month? So I, we evaluate mm-hmm. each person at the end of the month, every single day, some months I'll even tell, I'll even do my one-on-ones with them. And I say, Hey, uh, you know, I want you to kind of rate yourself. Right. And we'll see if we agree on each other. Right. True. Um, so everybody on my floor is in the green. Right. Uh, maybe like, you know, the core value, there might be a little bit sometimes and not right. Usually it's always the urgency core value. So we have one of our core values is urgency. And so sometimes people struggle with that one. Cause obviously me and my wife are always like, you know, as a business owner, was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right. And you're not going fast, fast enough. Right. <clears throat> um, cause again, this is people's, people's livelihoods. Right. But anyways, um, so that's been really big on helping to determine if this person is going to stay in our company or not. All the people who have left our company have always been in the red on one or more of the core values. Really? Yeah. So oh. if if they're not, so I'm talking about even one, if they're in the red on one of your core values, they do not belong in your company. If they do not embody all your core values, they shouldn't be in your company, right? So. Yeah. The last two core values that I was. <laughs> He's been thinking about that the entire time. No, they, they, were, the they were the most important ones, <laughs> which were team player and integrity. So fun. Love it passionate team player integrity and growth oriented i want to point this out fun when you say fun what do you mean an enjoyable person to be around okay it's just can we share a laugh and you know kenny is probably one of the most out-of-pocket most fun people that he can make anybody smile For sure. like if you cannot take a shot from kenny you don't belong here so it's like <laughs> you can't be too tight yeah for sure yeah no, I I wanted to point, I wanted to bring that one up because I wanted to see why would you, why did you make that your core value? And obviously, there's plenty of reasons why. Because so I I made a video not too long ago on Instagram, and it was me basically making fun of um, all the people that put ping pong tables in their in their mm-hmm. offices, right? And you saw it when you came into my office. You saw um, two of our guys. One guy rung the bell because he got a contract, mm-hmm. and then they did some some secret handshake, right? Mm -hmm. Like not a secret handshake, but like a celebrating handshake. Boom, 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 boom. Right. And everybody was just clapping. Everybody's. Yeah. So we obviously like to have fun as well. But when it comes to fun and and I've said this several times on my podcast is so for example, the reason why we don't have ping pong tables, maybe we will one day, I don't Mm -hmm. know. But at this time, this is my view 
is the reason why we don't have ping pong tables or air hockey tables or whatever you want to call it yeah. um, in the office is because, one, if you're doing any of those things, what, when are you working? And then, two, people are not here to play ping pong. During that time, these should be – obviously, they're here to make money for their deeper why, right? Did we mm-hmm. learn that from Ren, right? They're here They're here to make – so, one, you got to figure out what their deeper why is. They're here for money – for their deeper why. And if you're playing ping pong, they, they're they not here to have fun. They're here to, and again, I'm not saying like in general fun to, to be around and work around. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. You got to make sure everybody's collaborative, but if they want to go play ping pong, they're going to go home to their deeper why mm-hmm. and play ping pong. Right. Mm-hmm. They're here for a short period of time to bust, to bust their butts, to make some money and to go to the deeper why. So obviously, and again, that's just my, my thought of it right now. Yeah, the c- type of community and the type of business that we're trying to create is different than most. For sure. And we think about this a lot in which there are a lot of business models that take it to a very high level, implement some corporate structuring, and they have very high achieving goals, which I don't knock them for. And we have high achieving goals as well. And it's just a matter of like, do we want to be the type of company that everybody works eight hours a day? Or do we have to lower our revenue goal, lower our expectations? Everybody actually works five, six hours, but for they, sure. they can play forever. So for they can sure. they could play that five, six hour game for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah. And they want to get other people to play that game as well. Mm-hmm. And can we get the best production out of people in those first four to six hours mm-hmm. and create an enjoyable experience where it's just like people look forward to coming to work. For sure. People look forward to meeting the people in the community because real estate is really collaborative. And one of my big visions, I operate. My, uh, I built this thing in um, I, in November. I didn't build it, but it was like I wrote out my vivid vision based yeah. off of the book by Cameron Harold. Oh, nice. And one of the visions that I want to accomplish by the end of 2027 is to dominate Delaware real estate through collaboration over competition. Yeah. And one of the big things, our measurable metrics, is that year that we cap off 2027 want to create a million dollars for other people Love it. whether it's through investing investors money in our projects or other people's projects or we are doing jv wholesale deals flipping houses with other people or our meetup we're providing information in helping people do their first deal ever yeah um those are all things that contribute towards that million dollar figure where if i can help other people make a million dollars I'll have everything that I need. And honestly, I'm not in the same playing field in looking at, like comparing myself to other people right. and, if, you know, trying to make revenue goals based off of what my peers are trying to make. I'm hmm. trying to live the life that's most honoring to God hmm. and brings people closer to it. Honestly, this past year, I think I had two people through my company uh, become devout followers of Christ. That's awesome. And one of the people did leave after six, seven months, but she wouldn't really had the opportunity anywhere else yeah. where I've seen, you know, seen him work outside of that corporate space that fed her into uh, our church. And now she's serving in her own capacity and to, we, she doesn't need us in, awesome. order, in order to continue to serve Christ, you know, for sure. And I just have different goals than other people. And honestly, if I can keep on achieving those things and like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fine. And everybody on my team also has individual real estate goals outside of the company in which they can make money. I want them to want to come to work here for sure. every single day. And this is what they would do even if they were retired. Oh, I love it. So, I mean, I could chase yeah. after like the the two million dollar goal, or um, you know, chase after the million dollar goal, which I believe that's yeah. well within our wheelhouse and working within our capacity. It's I don't need to max out my potential in terms of my corporate production, Mm. you know? Yeah, for sure. So that's just how I see things differently. And I have nothing really to prove. Like I was financially free since I was 21, 22. I went golfing for three months during the pandemic and (laughs) it's like, it's boring to me. Did you get good at it? No, (laughs) no, that's why I don't like it. No, but I got into skiing recently. I love that, you know? That's that's my favorite rich person sport. I'm not rich, but I'm just, <laughs> it's like that's that's the that's the thing. If I were to dedicate more of my money, time, and resources is creating experiences right. with people that I care about, that I genuinely love, and 
you know, utilizing other people's gifts and talents in order mm -hmm. to further the kingdom of God, as well as one of my gifts, honestly, is helping other people see the potential within themselves and putting that potential into motion and helping them open up this whole different, whole yeah. nother life that they didn't even know that they could live. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. I, I mean, I, I actually want to hit, hit that more on the head and actually where you're going to be taking that. Um, that with the time and hours, I know you said that your guys worked like six hours and stuff like that at the moment because you want to give them a great lifestyle. I have a funny story. Um, so we were at not when we weren't in this office, we were in a smaller office and we just started with Ren. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, me and my wife wanted to kind of create our own lifestyle where we came in at <laughs> nine, we left at two. So it was like six hours, right? Mm -hmm. And so. So that was our working schedule at the time, and um, we t and so we tell Ren. Ren was a, a <laughs> mutual coach of ours, and <laughs> do you know where I'm going with this? Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I tell him. So obviously, so I'm 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 having trouble with like my old team employee, right? So any all the people that were there in my small office are not like no none of them are lo no longer with with us, right? We obviously um, you know raised the bar of excellence, right? Um, and standards and everything. So obviously that brought in new people. Uh, but anyways, and I was having trouble with one of the employees there and, and about time and everything like that. And he, and so he's like, and so he asked me, he's like, uh, where, cause I was, I was struggling with the time frame, and I felt bad by making, by thinking I was going to have these guys work X amount of hours. And then Ren says, and so I tell him, I say, yeah, we work from nine to nine to five. And he said, give me a call. Or like, I think like I looked at my phone, he was calling me and he was like, and he, he was like, you are working like you're not going to hit your goals one for one. If you're working those hours, he called it like you're working part time. Right. And, um, so he's like, you're not going to get your working goals part time. Obviously everybody else in this, uh, and obviously he was trying to make me feel better too. Cause like, he's like everybody in this, uh, in the country works eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Right. That's the standard. Um, now obviously there's different, you know, obviously if you want to have a different type of culture set up, whatever for, you know, obviously that's great, you know, whatever, but we were trying to go the revenue that we were trying to bring in and we were hitting, you know, knocking our heads on the wall and thinking like, why are we not making the revenue that we want? He's like, cause Ren's like, you're, you're working part time. You have your people working part time. They ain't going to work from home. Right. So we thought that was pretty funny. And then, uh, we changed that. So we actually had to sit down, have a conversation with every single individual and tell them, Hey, we're going to be changing our working hours, you know? You can stay with us or not, right? This is yeah. the road we're heading. So I'm guessing you had some, and then obviously then something else I wanted to talk to you too about, but some other things you're talking, but did you have a similar experience with uh, Ren? No, we've always worked 8.30 to 4.30, but okay. then we can go out for like a lunch <clears throat> for like an hour, hour and a half. For sure. And just bounce it. We're still talking about work even when we're out at lunch. It's just the love for the game, you know? Mm -hmm. We're here to play the game for the long run. And- we also came to the realization that it's, what are these timelines that we hold that, hold ourselves? that thought. I'm, I got to put my uh, charger in my laptop. All right. You got it, man. <laughs> nice. All right. Sorry about that. No. So the realization that we came to was that who put these timelines upon ourselves that we needed to be a $2 million company in the next 12 months. Right. Who put these arbitrary revenue numbers awesome. in front of us? I did. And then who also set the timelines to be so short? I did. And it's like, right. why do we need to do that? And right. it's like, you're right. We, that actually doesn't really get us closer to our deeper why. Hmm. So when we reevaluated all of that, we're just like, honestly, how much does everybody need to make? And then what are we actually doing with the money? And what does this company do in terms of its mission and, and vision? And how is this serving God and serving others? Yeah. Let's figure that out. Let's break that down. What is possible? And after having that conversation, we're just like, honestly, we like where our lives are at and we like to continuously grow. And we, we're we now focused on the journey. I love that. Versus, I mean, and we have a direction of where we're going. We have revenue goals, of course. So we, we're not just shooting blind at the hip, but we know the type of people that we want to be and we are shooting to be those type of people and those type of leaders in building the life that we want to live. We're going to have a, a much more enjoyable time doing it. 
and all the people that join us along the process or along the journey are going to be the people that also want the same things in which that will allow us to scale. And maybe it's not scaling in the sense of 50% in a year, but honestly, um, we're, we just gotten a lot more deeper in terms of our objective, what we're trying to do and what does everybody want out of this. For that's sure. why I'm content you know, where I am, I'm not satisfied and I'm not just going to keep on coasting, but I know that I want to play the real estate game in Delaware for the next 40, 50 years and mentor other people. And I still want to be working when I'm in my seventies, I still want to be doing deals, but maybe I'll be more of an advisor, more passive investor, more of a mentor to other people. And I know people make more money down their life as they become middle age or as they become older. The more that the more knowledge that they have, the less that they have to have to put their labor into mm-hmm. the deals in transacting real estate. But when you're younger, you don't have that same level of expertise and knowledge. So you do need to put in that sweat equity, that day in and day out work. So that's currently where we are at. For sure. No, that, that's, and that's, that's incredible. And <clears throat> for anybody listening to, it's like, don't beat yourself up. And obviously I'm actually speaking to myself on you know, if you got these high end goals, don't beat yourself up. Obviously, you always think about the kind of life that you want, you know, um, you know, cause I, sometimes I'll be honest, like I, I measure myself sometimes on like how much money are we making in an X amount of time. Right. And, you know, and we talked about this earlier. It's, you know, we also, you also got to learn how to be an operator. You know, too many people measure themselves against people that might get into the same, the space that you were in, whatever kind of business, but let's just use real estate wholesale as an example, or even like a realtor, right? If you're, if you're an agent watching this, um, too many people will measure themselves against another person because, but sometimes these people come in with business experience. You don't know their background, right? Uh, when I first came in, I didn't know, th- no idea about what to do in business, how to be an operator, how to be a leader on a sales floor, what sales was, you know what I mean? Um, so I, that was all learning curves. Um, so no, I, I love that. And so it sounds like you really want to make a big impact on individual lives in the real estate space. I mean, what kind of goals and strategies do you have to make that impact that you're kind of searching out to be? So for one, we, we host a real estate meetup every yeah. single month. We've been really consistent about it since May of 2022. And we've actually elevated ourselves to be the top meetup within Delaware. That's awesome. And we innovate, we continuously bring new ideas, new speakers, new ways to network with one another in order to be more collaborative because that's not only my goal to uh, be personally dominating through collaboration over competition, but I want to embody that type of culture amongst my market. Mm -hmm. And by drawing out that vivid vision, like I show it to everybody in which Mm -hmm. comes through the doors of our office building. And I'm just sharing with them what I'm trying to accomplish and what I think is possible. And I, that belief in myself instills a new belief in them sometimes. And whenever I can encourage somebody to take steps of faith in themselves and trusting in this ability that they have not even seen in themselves, Mm -hmm. I count that as a win. I love that. And how old are you now? I'm 24. I'm turning 25 February 1st, man. There you go. 24 years old, uh, financially free in real estate, uh, making money. Um, obviously it sounds, it sounds like you got your spirituality, um, in place, you know, you got your, you know, obviously finances in place now. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, but I mean, family. Yeah. So, I mean, we were kind of talking about something prior to this. Um, but I mean, you have a future on wanting to be a father. Yeah. Right? You have a wife, you want to be a father. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about that, about being a father and being a parent. And then how is that, how is that, um, impact, you know, your business and spirituality or what your whole entire life. Yeah. And right now we were talking about how you get to travel and kind of do these cool things. I'm not saying you can't do that without kids, but I, it was funny. I was telling my wife the other day is like, you know, those, um, like for example, so I'm 35, I just turned 35. The, you know, when we work out, so I go to the gym every morning mm-hmm. and when I, I mean, I'm between when I was 35 and 25 are two different like fitness, right? Now I, I'm actually feeling like I'm actually been hitting the gym real hard lately. I, I, don't, I think I'm in the best shape of my life since at least in my thirties. And then when I was 25, I was in, I was in incredible shape. Right. And I always think if I ever hire like a fitness trainer 
Mm-hmm. You better be 30 and above, right? Like <laughs> I'm never going to hire anybody that's like in their twenties because like you could drink and eat crap and be fine. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how I lived my life in my twenties. And, and obviously thirties, you get, you know, dowels will start slowing down, um, aches and pains start coming and stuff yeah. like that. So, but, and, and then also I say the same thing about business almost. It's like, I don't want to learn from anybody in business or an operator unless they have kids. Mm-hmm. Not saying you can't learn from some. Obviously, you can learn from everybody. You should be yeah. always looking like, well, what can I learn from this individual? Like just in this podcast, I'm thinking, like, what can I learn from Jesse today, and what, and what kind of value can I give to him? What can I learn from Jesse today? You know, and but it's so funny. Like as an operator, I'm like, because you know, with kids, it is completely different. Yeah. You get these guys who come in and say, I'm 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 in the office as as a business owner. I'm in the office before everybody. And I leave after everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but when you have kids, it's a little different. Mm-hmm. Maybe if they're a little older. But with me and, uh, you know, so I have a, I have a four year old and a, um, a nine month year old and I, me and my wife wake up, we got to wake him up. We got to get up. We got to get, and she's just, she's a business partner of mine. So she's just as involved in the business as I am. Mm-hmm. So we gotta, we gotta get them up. We gotta make them breakfast. We gotta get them dressed. We gotta brush our teeth. We gotta get them to school on time. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm, I can't be in here before anybody else. Right. Like, but we are in here on time. Yeah. Um, and then, like, you know, my wife's out today because my, my little one's teething and, he, you know, he can't go to school right now because he has a low-grade fever. And uh, so she's beating herself up right now, and I'm trying to comfort her right now, kind of like saying, hey, it's okay. It's okay to stay yeah. home and be be here and have this ability to, to, you know, take care of our son. You know what I mean? And, uh, she, you know, because she wants to be in the office. She wants to work. we got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, But, yeah, so it's like with kids, it is a different, different uh, yeah. dynamic on how you're going to do it. So. And I know Ryan Pineda just came out with a great book called The Wealthy Way, and and I heard him on his podcast just recently, and, and I'm actually going to pick up the book and read it because I think it, I think, you know, because obviously, uh, you know, The Wealthy Way is a whole acronym itself, right? Worship, and the rest is like, you know, obviously business, um, you know, health and all that stuff. But I feel like I'm in the best place in my life that I, I feel like everything's pretty much balanced. You yeah. know what I mean? It's so hard to find that. Like, I, I think the business is running well. It's something that's a passion of ours. Um I have a great relationship with my wife as a husband, and, uh, husband and wife, and then I have a great relationship with my kids. So, and then also my health. I wake up every morning and go to the gym. So it's, it's awesome, bro. Yeah, but the holidays always throw it a little out of whack. But you that's know. okay. You have a little grace for yourself, <laughs> you know. And um, can't be perfect. No, for sure. Yes, we can. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But no, it's, it's so it's it's been a it's been a great thing as long as you keep a good routine and you keep your head right and you know you stay positive, man. And I think for us as entrepreneurs and as just human beings in general, you know, self development has been a big old thing mm-hmm. um, this past this past year. This past four years actually um has been just incredible in self-development and so before i before i go on and tangent what do you, in your own mind like what kind of self-development have you been kind of going down these uh these last couple of years the last couple of years well um pulling back to like the inspiration of that uh to be a parent in like mm. hopefully the next 12 18 months that's like kind there of me and my wife's timeline my partner kenny actually has nine kids mm as somebody who's like, I think he's like 49 years old. Okay. He has nine kids in which I think he has like two or three kids older than me. And maybe one that's actually my age, <laughs> but he doesn't see me for like sure, that, which is that's kind a, of funny. Awesome. And then he has four kids under 10. Oh, wow. This guy is nuts, oh. but he's such an admirable guy and he's a great father. He wants to be present for them. He doesn't bring his mm. junk from home into the office and right. drown people out in the negativity. He's develop so much and I, that's just an inspiration to me mm-hmm. and somebody I would want to be more like going down the line but one of the things that have really changed me inspired me was going to the Maui Mastermind trip in 2021 yeah I don't want to come off like I'm flexing because I went to Brandon Turner's Maui Mastermind but it's like <laughs> I just respond to a call you know it was just a post over Instagram okay I think about 70 people applied to go to uh, this mastermind and 30 people got selected and then yeah another nice. 30 people went to the month after so actually i guess 60 out of 70 or 80 people got selected to go to this thing and it was really cool it was in the midst of COVID 19 but i got to go to the first group which was i feel like was the first hand pick group For sure and i was the youngest person and i remember when they were doing introductions i was just so shy man i I forgot who I was. I didn't forgot what I did. I forgot what market I'm in. Uh, so it's like to go from that 
to building all those relationships alongside Brandon and Tarl. Mm. Those were some really monumental uh, relationships in my life that inspired me to be to understand the type of person that I want to be growing up because a lot of these people were entrepreneurs in their own respect, yeah. parents in their own respect, and they were also human beings that felt lost in their lives and were, were looking for the next thing mm. professionally. So I can really just level with them and just ask questions and learn as much as I possibly can and be a sponge. And that really started working my humility muscle and I think having that humility to just lower myself to the bottom, kind of like uh, I'm taking the servant leadership class at my church right now. And there was a, I wish I could re refer the actual book in the story, but it basically talked about, hey, if you are at a, a dinner table and the host is at the head of the table, you don't just pull yourself to the head, next to the head, to a higher position yourself. Put yourself down to the bottom and then have the host bring you up to where they believe you fit at this mm. table. Okay. So I just learned this recently, but I look at how I kind of naturally applied that principle where I was just like, I don't see myself. I mean, before it was different. It was a lot, it was less humility and more of lack of confidence in myself. That's why I put myself at the bottom. And that's mm. why I just want to work myself up. And to this day, it has shifted from a lack of confidence to more of a demonstration of humility to mm. put myself at the bottom so that I can learn because I right. believe I can learn from anybody. Yeah. And then you know, I will be appointed to higher positions by the people who are hosting said parties. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Through that principle, when I came back in 2022 to the Maui Mastermind, people were just like, who is this new Jesse? You know, it's yeah. just totally different. He's not shy anymore. And he's so much more outspoken. Like, I can actually mm. have a conversation with him. <laughs> it's like I went from being ultra awkward and really insecure in myself to being somebody who felt extremely secure in himself and mm. willing to learn, willing to level with people. And I had seen my peers who were in their mid 40s, 50s, maybe even 60s at this time. We were just friends. I didn't, right. I didn't see them as Mr. This or you know this person who had like three kids and it was like my parents' age. Right. It's just like we we're all peers trying to learn, do life together. Yeah. And I think I took that value back to Delaware and I shared it amongst the people in Delaware. And I think that's where I'm really innovating hmm. in my local market because it's just an old money environment. People who work real estate, but they work from home and hmm. they don't collaborate and they don't talk to one another. And it's like we may see each other for coffee twice a year, if hmm. that, if once a year. And now I created a whole real estate investor co-working space for us to see each other as much yeah. as we want to see each other. And I'm there every single day leading that charge, nice. setting that example so that people may want to follow and live this better life for themselves. Yeah. No, I mean, you're going to be doing incredible, incredible things. I, I, I love what I love that dude about you. And, and so what he was talking about is this commercial building you bought. Um, <clears throat> you basically made it into a place where people could come together and mastermind, hold events and stuff like that. Have you been doing that? Have you been holding your meetups there? No, I haven't been holding my meetups there. So where we were working at previously was another co-working space that was mm -hmm. owned corporately. But it was also, um, it's it's not like a WeWork at all. Like it's privately owned by big corporate company, and then they renovated this old train st station building, six stories, mm. and we can rent, um, you know, event space for like forty five to fifty dollars an hour, and yeah. I hold like one hundred fifty people there. It was cr it's crazy. Like these Delaware prices are just insane, you know. Yeah. So I'd rather have it hosted over there, and then. If people really want to get serious and do business, right, right. then they come to, we call it the Delaware Real Estate Collective. So mm. they come to that. over here in order to establish their businesses, build meaningful relationships, host their own like private dinner events. We just had our own, actually we just had four events, not like real events, but it was like we had four gatherings at this place. So one of my wife's vision and dreams was to, create spaces that make people feel at home. Hmm. And this was one of her things that she shared with me in the summer. And we had seen 
this property pop up on my Facebook feed in August. And we were basically the first people. Like two hours after it was shown on Facebook, we saw that. We saw it in person and we fell in love with this place. And when we had closed on the property end of October, between October and the time we left, so it was October 23rd when we closed and we left for LA on December 14th in that six, seven weeks, you know, we renovated and we uh, painted all the trim, put up all the recess lighting, made it really nice. But we also hosted four functions, Friendsgiving with our church, uh, young adult group. We had Thanksgiving for my family. We had a white elephant Christmas party for my college friends. Oh, nice. And then I had a partner appreciation dinner, which was business related for everybody who brought us JV deals. I ended up cooking them uh, prime ribeye steak. And, <laughs> nice. you know, we got the charcoal grill fired up, sous vide all these steaks. I cooked seven, you know, uh, prime ribeyes, served mashed potatoes, served um, who did all? Who did all the cooking? Me and my team. There you go. Yeah, so we didn't get the reservation to the steakhouse that's in the city, which is like, you know, maybe $75 a person. Mm -hmm. And then the parking situation sucked. And, it, you know, it's, I personally think it's an overrated steakhouse. But it's like, <laughs> but everyone loves it, which is fine. But like, I believe I can I can cook a pretty good steak. So, <laughs> so I just thought that it had, apart from just saving money and being frugal, I just thought I meant so much more from the bottom of my heart to mm. serve the people who believed in me, trusted in me in order to help advance their businesses. Right. And we did it together. And I got to introduce all of them to one another. And that, you know, hopefully in the future, we can continue to do deals together, advance our lives together. And I just want to set that example up front. I think we did just as, I don't know if we did just as many JB deals as anyone, any other operator inside our market, but the ones that we did, like, it was more than just doing business. It was building real friendships. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if I could say, you know, everybody does the same thing that we do because we make different choices opposed yeah. to, you know, other businesses that, you know, judge their business based off of top line and bottom line. Right, right. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, so what is 2024 have for you guys? What are the goals and things you want to do? Obviously, what's what's the revenue goals? What what kind of extra strategies are you doing? And then what kind of impact are you trying to make? Uh, like, what's like what's a big, audacious, hairy goal for mm -hmm. um, 2024? So we set our revenue goal to $612,000. I believe that was 25% growth from where we did this past year, in which I have no doubt in my mind that we can accomplish oh, yeah. that goal. Um, we want to fully occupy the building in terms of all of his offices and sell as many memberships as we possibly can in terms of open space membership, but if we can fill all the offices. That's the number one goal when it comes to the Delaware real estate collective. We, uh, going back to the wholesale business, you know, I just did them out of order. We want to establish right person, right place hmm. and hire a, maybe, maybe this is the solution, but we think that I personally think that hiring a consultant, um, that would, you know, e either it's EOS implementer or a rise implementer, um, business operations. If we can establish right person, right seat, hash out all of our core values and hire fire train based off all off of all of these building the right business foundation in order to scale from this point forward. That's what I would like to do in 2024 because unless we are all on the same page and we know exactly how this business runs and we know how to cover for one another in the worst case that anything happens to anybody, yeah. then like that's that would be a major win, major success because right now everybody's carrying a whole lot of weight and most people are sitting in two, three plus seats uh, on that organization chart. And right now it's holding up, it's sustaining it's doing well, but what's your team? What's yeah. your team look like now, and what would you like your team to look like next year? Right now, I sit mm -hmm. in the CEO uh, CEO seat. My partner uh, Kenny sits in sales, and he's actually taking a lot more responsibility uh, to go up to director of sales. Mm. Josh, my uh, COO, we brought him on as a acquisition guy and almost fired him, and he turned <laughs> out to be 
really good operator. <laughs> so go. he sits in the COO and director of marketing. And my wife has been sitting in director of ops, director of finance and HR. And she wants <laughs> to step back and just do finance. So yeah, yeah. we need to figure out how are we going to sufficiently fill those seats of HR and ops. Okay. So yeah. Uh, I don't want Josh to spread himself too thin to For go sure. towards a, uh, ops and hr so we're going to need to figure that out yeah i'm thinking about you know inquiring sharper or eos to fill in that space so they could run our operations uh in terms of like running those meetings Mm because i think that's one of the things that feel really heavy for my wife where it's just like running those meetings holding people account it's like it's different when so clint put it like this to me where he's just like oh we just had uh they just had a Ren in the past do their QSMs or whatever. And it's totally different when Ren's in the business versus Ren's coaching another business. Mm. So they took a step back and was like, okay, we're bringing Brewer and we're just gonna hire him okay. to do our QSMs. I think QSM is quarterly sales meeting. Right? Mm-hmm. And when they did that, it's like this outside third party person can now call your company out on all this BS that you guys are doing and being, be real with you guys and level out. And you would care about it more from somebody on the outside than if it's somebody on the inside where it's just like, oh, you're slack. You maybe just be a little bit uh, off edge. You maybe check your phone. You're not as focused. That's what I've noticed with myself. Yeah. Um, and that's where I've fallen short as a leader. And I was, sub- I was subconsciously not being uh, a good leader to the people on my team. And I think that's one of the things in which I can really improve upon in 2024 is just being a lot more present, being a lot more engaged. Mm. Cause when I bring the energy to the past couple of level 10 meetings, the last couple of weeks for my team, we've been getting ratings seven out of 10, eight out of 10 before it used to be rated like two, three, four, just getting yeah. bombed. And it's just like, we're not in- intentional enough. We're not hitting our, uh, you know, we're the meetings dragging on talking about stuff that doesn't even really matter for sure and that was just lack of uh lack of quality of leadership honestly yeah no I, I love i love the transparency and like i said it's definitely i think that's the most important thing is focus on leadership as early as possible read good books find good mentors put be intentional about being a good leader mm-hmm. right and focus and, and realize um, where are your, where are your faults at? Where are you being a diminisher? Where can I be a multiplier in, in that? So, but yeah, just, <clears throat> so Jesse, I'm going to end it here. And then, uh, obviously we'll kind of hang out a little bit after, sure. but Jesse, thank you so much for coming on here. Do you have any last words you want to, uh, kind of give out? No, I really appreciate Aaron. Thanks for creating this platform, allowing for investors to just be real raw, talk about their deals, talk about their team, talk about them personally. I like how, you know, we jumped all around in terms of topics and we didn't just only talk about business but we mm-hmm. talked about what do we have going on outside the business because the, honestly the only reason why i got into this particular business and stayed in this industry is not for the money but it was mainly to go on this awesome journey mm-hmm. of personal growth business growth and uh exploration with all the people around me and i've just been extremely blessed to have people like yourself and people inside you know the cg community family who've also you know, added so much substance and value into my life and helped me and inspire me to be a better person, better version of myself. So thanks, bro. Man, you heard it first here, man. Again, thanks so much, Jesse, for hopping on. If you're in the Delaware area or just want to hit Jesse up, uh, please reach out to him. He's a complete go-giver. But again, hey, we'll see you next time here at the Real Estate Block Podcast. All right, peace out.